Let's talk a little more about EPA and DHA. Um, specifically, you have a concern about brain health and dementia that includes vegans. Yes. Tell us about that. You know, we know that most people get dementia because they don't eat fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds and beans. Most people eat dementia because they don't have the antioxidants to protect the brain. And their body is toxic from eating junk food, rancid oils, fried foods, right? Narrowing the blood vessels of the brain. So the average American doesn't get dementia because of deficiency of omega-3 fatty acid. But once you move to this healthy diet, where we're getting enough antioxidants and we have great circulation, why should a vegan get any dementia? There should be zero risk of a vegan getting dementia. And there's not. So the question is, do vegans have no dementia? And no, they actually, the Seventh-day Adventist Health Study 2 showed vegans had more dementia than the non-vegans did, believe it or not, and some had more strokes too. And for, the, for this reason we're talking about. So, but even if they had a little less, it still wouldn't question the fact, why should they get any? And the answer is a different cause of dementia in the vegan population. They're not getting to from anti or from a high healthy eating population, like my mentors who were natural hygienists who lived on raw foods and all these healthy foods and still got dementia or Parkinson's, right? And so in those cases, then the omega-3 index becomes uh, an indicator of risk. And the lack of EPA, DHA in those people are putting them at increased risk. So it's a more narrow segment of the population where EPA and DHA is one of the contributory factors to dementia, whereas it may not be the main factor in meat-based or standard American diet eating population. So yes, so we want to do everything right. We want to be on a plant-based or vegan diet and still maintain an optimal omega-3 index. So we're talking about the measurements of how we can measure a person's blood or, or health, determine how long they're going to live and how healthy they're going to be in later life. We're going to look at the nutritional concentration of their cells, the toxicity of their cells, right? Their low level of body fat, which causes inflammation. And we're going to look at their omega-3 index to be favorable. What I'm saying is a favorable omega-3 index is the fourth part of the puzzle to enable a, v a, a healthy eater to be able to master a long lifespan without brain shrinkage, dementia, or other neurologic deficits can come from omega-3 deficiency. So it's an important part of the puzzle that some vegans are reticent to accept or because of their predilection or bias to want the vegan diet to be perfect are looking for excuses not to supplement. And I'm saying, you know, unless you got a number on your blood test that's adequate, I wouldn't take that risk because we have too many studies that can't be thrown in the garbage pail and ignored, even though people like to do them. So you know how people just like focus on what they want to believe and they ignore the reality of what's out there. And we're trying to say, we can't deny reality here. A low level yeah. is not safe. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, there's a decent amount of research finding plant-based eaters with high levels of ALA, the short chain omega-3 fatty acid, because they're eating their flax and chia seeds and their walnuts, but lower levels of EPA and DHA, which is, of course is why you're focusing there because we do want to get our ALA from food, you know, as much Well, as you're possible. making a good point is that ALA adequacy doesn't essentially assure us to have EPA and DHA adequacy. And the other thing is true too, that taking a supplement with EPA and DHA doesn't assure ALA adequacy. And mm -hmm. ALA adequacy is a separate benefit. For example, the myocytes, the, the cells in the heart, are more likely to develop a heart cardiac arrhythmia due to ALA deficiency. That means, and that's one of the reasons eating nuts and seeds have been shown to reduce the risk of cardiac arrhythmias, both atrial fibrillation, atrial fibrillation and life-threatening cardiac arrhythmias. In the physician's health study, we had a 60% lower risk of sudden cardiac death for people eating one ounce of nuts and seeds compared to those physicians who did not eat nuts and seeds. And the sudden cardiac death was caused by irregular heartbeats, not a clot in the heart. So we're saying here that um, diets need to include short chain fatty acids from nuts and seeds, regardless of your omega-3 index is adequate or not. And that's an important new concept that we have to make sure people are aware of that, that eating your walnuts and eating your um, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds are an important part of a healthy diet. And at this point in my dietary, you could say career, I recommend that people when they eat their nuts and seeds, I try to have half my nut and seed intake be from those that contain omega-3 and my other half be from the non-omega-3, so I'm balanced. 
It doesn't have to be accurately balanced, but I'm just being careful. I'm just being aware of consuming my walnuts and my hemp seeds and my flax seeds and my chia seeds. And not just like what I like to do is eat all pistachio nuts and cashews all day. You know what I mean? To keep the pistachios yeah. and cashews balanced with some walnuts and flax seeds and chia seeds. Yeah, absolutely. 